In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use the new FJD Tryon P1 LiDAR scanner. So first up is you'll turn on the scanner and also the camera. Okay, the default settings of the camera is normally correct. So from there, you take your controller and you have to connect to the Wi-Fi of the scanner. So you'll go into your phone settings, Wi-Fi settings, and you wait until you see the FJD Wi-Fi. You're in it, the password is FJD Tryon P1, all small caps, and you join the network. Once the network is joined, you'll go on to the FJD TransScan app, and then you'll add the device. You'll select P1. You can say always allow. And now you just simply follow the steps. So I'm gonna say next step, and it picks up the scanner. So now we're ready to scan. For this training, we are in an auditorium where we need to do a scan so that they can use the point cloud data for renovations. So we are going to do two scans. The reason for that is, is we're gonna scan the inside of the building because in try and model, there's different settings for inside versus outside scans. So we're first gonna do the inside and then we're gonna start the new scan and go outside. On the outside of the building, we've already established GCPs, which we're also going to show you how to collect in order to establish control. Let's start. So the scanner needs to be on a stable surface so that it can finish the initializing process. So on our app, we're going to select scan. We're going to enter the project name. Auditorium inside. We're going to select OK. It's initializing. So you keep the device still. So that's why it's always better to keep it on a flat and stable surface. Okay, once it's initialized, the camera will automatically start rolling. You will also see um, on the application there on the top hand side, there's the camera with the uh, green circle. That means that the video is in progress. So for the auditorium, we're gonna start on the inside where there's normally the most features. So we're gonna walk between the chair. Okay, when you get to the middle, the range is about 40 meters. So we know we are receiving enough range. So I'm gonna make a 360 turn. at a steady pace. Okay. So we are currently scanning floors. So normally what you want to do is you want your, the center of the scanner actually pointing towards your point of interest. So if you are scanning something that's 30 meters high, you would typically try and point it to the middle of your target uh, so that you get the most effective scanning range. So I'm just gonna do a walk around this floor before we go up to scan the second and the third floor. Typically, you would like to keep the segments of your scans within 15 minutes. This just means that you do not have to do multiple meshes when processing your data.
So we have finished collecting the first part of our data, which was the inside of the auditorium. Next up is the outside. So you will see that we have placed multiple ground control points, which we also measured in with a GNSS receiver. As we start the scan and we come by one of the GCPs, we're also going to collect that with our scanner. Okay, so we're gonna say, scan, I say that's okay. The project name, we're gonna say, auditorium outside, and I press okay. So again, we're placing it on a stable surface for the initializing process. Okay, so once our scan preview comes up, we know that we're ready to scan. So I'm gonna turn to face the building. So if the P1, the algorithm is very agile. So I can actually go up, I can go down to make sure that I get all the features that I want and move down in terms of your point of interest if you're close to your building. Okay, so I'm gonna continue that. I'm gonna walk around the building and when I get to a GCP, I'm going to measure that in with the Tron scanner as well. So when you come to a GCP, all you have to do is come down. You'll see on the base plate, there's a cross. You place that in the middle of your GCP and then on your screen, you see the target or the crosshair button. You press it and you say, collect control point. And that you will do with each GCP. Once you've collected it, you can pick up again and continue with your scan. When you're done with your scan, you press complete and your data saves. So now you're ready to take your data as well as your GNSS data of the GCPs back to the office and put everything into try and model to do your processing.